Up to this point, we can be sure together that Starship is very unlikely to reach orbit this year. However, a static fire 33 engine test is still worth looking forward to. And fortunately, at a time when the timeline is becoming less optimistic, we see a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel. SpaceX is now paying attention to upgrading everything for the massive 33 engine firing upcoming. Find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX Super Heavy Booster 7 and Starship S24 are two good candidates for Starship's maiden orbital flight. Ship 24 itself has six Raptor 2 engines and will have the capacity to bring more than 220,000 pounds of crew and cargo to low Earth orbit, which is slightly more than the current SLS capacity. Meanwhile, Booster, using 33 of SpaceX's new Raptor 2 engines, will produce 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff which is nearly double that that's seen, heard, and felt at the Artemis 1 launch. Now let's talk about their status. Ship 24 first. A huge amount of scaffolding was being constructed around our Starship, and now the structure now reaches almost the height of the payload bay door. Honestly, that's a scary amount of scaffolding and the workers had to go up and down all those stairs. Notably, as you see, SpaceX removed some of the ship's heat shield tiles. According to some sources, that removal is so SpaceX can reinforce the weld lines between the vehicle's steel ring segments, which are in a rather worrying state of instability. That's likely in response to a can crusher test we saw a few months ago. On the other hand, Starship 25 remains in the high bay to install six Raptor engines and a series of shields and firewalls that will protect those engines from each other. Once fully outfitted, Ship 25 will return to the launch site for static fire testing and take Ship 24's place on suborbital pad B. Ship 24 took approximately two months to go from its last cryo-proof to its first static fire, but its testing got off to a relatively rocky start. So Ship 25 could be ready sooner. The rest is B7, which is actually being upgraded more seriously. B7 has been moved to the production site. Although Musk didn't reveal exactly what he'll upgrade on B-7 based on some indications, there's a few points that SpaceX may be able to make. Remember the damaged transfer tube in the leaked photo of Booster 7 a few months ago? Well, that photo shows a portion of B-7's liquid methane LCH4 transfer tube that runs through the booster's new liquid oxygen header tank, which itself sits inside Super Heavy's main LOX tank at the aft end of the rocket. A tube inside a small tank, inside a large tank, in other words. Super Heavy's LCH4 transfer tube generally does what it says, allowing methane to safely fly down through the main LOX tank and fuel up the 33 Raptor engines. At full thrust, the tube has to supply about 20 tons or about 45,000 pounds of methane per second. If the replaced transfer tube passes the test, it'll be a great assurance for Booster 7. Besides on top of merely transferring methane through the oxygen tank, Booster 7 introduced a design change that allows some or all of that tube to change functions and become a header tank mid-flight. That would require a system of valves that could seal off the main LCH4 tank once it was empty, turning the transfer tube into sort of a giant steel straw filled with enough LCH4 to fuel Super Heavy's boost back and landing burns. And according to much speculation, the upgrades will probably include the Raptor Blast shielding. In addition, some suggested that SpaceX may install Astro struts on Booster 7. If you built a long, tall rocket, launched it, and then turned up the time warp only to see if the whole thing would collapse on itself like an accordion, bend in half, or tie itself up in knots mid-flight, well, guess what? Auto struts can fix that. Auto struts are like regular struts, they add rigid reinforcements between parts to hold everything steady, but unlike normal struts, auto struts are free, weigh nothing, and can be connected to three parts. It's also the heaviest part of the rocket, which can change in flight, especially when docking. Once these upgrades are completed, B-7 will be rolled back to the launch pad. However, in another situation, the launch pad is also requiring an upgrade. As we explained in the last episode, the launch pad is a real problem. There's lots of work on and underneath the orbital launch mount recently, plumbing work, shielding, and tearing up concrete. Besides, height was added to the berm at the orbital launch site. The berm protects the other parts from liftoff and catch landing impact. Now you might wonder why SpaceX doesn't build a flame trench. 
Actually, the launch site's very small and in the middle of a wildlife preserve. They're not allowed to discharge water into the land next to the site, and that means they need to collect that water. But they have nowhere to dig a basin for the water because the Army Corps of Engineers would not allow it. A trench in a place where the groundwater is two meters below the ground is just not practical. Also, where are they to point the flames? They can point them on the tank farm or the tower, and they are not allowed to point them at the WLP either. If this OLM does not make it, they would have to start from scratch somewhere else. In the end, the core of the problem lies in the Starship engine Raptor 2, and SpaceX is improving that day by day. A SpaceX Raptor rocket engine exploded during a recent test, joining a long series of epic blasts at Elon Musk Space Travel Company. As NASA Spaceflight explains in the video of the explosion, the green flash of light that occurred in this specific blaze generally happens when the engine has started to eat into the copper section. Known in the spaceflight world as a Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly, or RUD, this type of explosion, while spectacular, is fairly common for SpaceX as it throws stuff at the proverbial wall to see what sticks, or in this case, what blows up. Honestly, while explosions seem to be par for the course on SpaceX, that doesn't mean they aren't expensive as all get out. The company lost upwards of $260 million in 2015 when one of the Falcon 9 spacecraft blew up shortly after liftoff. A 2016 Falcon 9 explosion annoyed Musk so much that the company investigated whether sabotage might have been to blame, and that's without getting into the various demises of its Falcon 1 prototypes or the explosion of an early Crew Dragon module before it had sent any astronauts to space. Needless to say, it's much better for explosions to occur during test firings rather than actual launches. And even when they do explode at inopportune times, Musk often insists that the data the company collects for the mishap is worth it to upgrade to a better job next time. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.